Hello everyone, my name is Karan Masru. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to look at the solution of the problem that is recursive sequence. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. What does question say? A function f is defined as follows. f of n is 1 plus 2 into 3 plus 4 into 5 into 6 up to n terms. Okay. So, uh, if we are given n equals to 3, we will go up till this. Okay. Because this is first term, this is second term, this is third term and so on. Look at the example for better clarity. Given an integer n, the task is to determine f of n. So, we are given the value of n, we need to determine f of n. As the answer can be very large, return the answer modulo 10 key power 9 plus 7. Okay. So, if n is 5, it will contain 5 terms, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th. And how are the terms? 1st contain 1, 2nd contains 2 elements, that is 2 into 3. 3rd contains 3 elements starting with 4, okay, the next element of 3. So, it is 4 into 5 into 6. The next contains 4 elements starting with 7. So, 7 into 8 into 9 into 10. So, the elements are consecutive in order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to 15 and so on. Total terms are n and in ith term there are i, I number of elements, okay. Similarly, for n equal to 7, you can have a look at here. You don't need to read input or print anything. Your task is to complete the function sequence which takes an integer n as input parameters and returns the answer of f of n. The expected time complexity is n square and space complexity is constant. So, now if we think about solving this problem, then if we look at the problem carefully, then for example, if f of n, if n equals to 4 is given, then what is f of n? It will contain sum of 4 elements, okay. The first element will contain uh, the product of one element, the second element will contain product of two elements, third element will contain product of three elements, fourth element will contain product of four elements. The elements start with one and go in consecutive order. So, this will contain one element, this will contain product of two elements, this will contain product of three elements and they go in consecutive order. This is three, this is four. Now, this will be seven into eight into nine into ten. So, this is f of four. Okay, in this way we go. So, how can I do that? I can take an answer variable as 0. I will calculate this individual i terms and add it to my answer. Right? So, for i equals to 1, i is less than equal to n, i plus plus. In this, I will calculate the i term. Okay? Now, the ith term has product of i number of elements. Right? So, I will say sum is equals to 1. So, in sum, I will store the ith element. So, sum will contain first 1, then it will contain 2, 3, then it will contain 4, 5, 6. So, I will calculate sum and keep adding it to my answers. Okay. This is the n terms inside. Uh, this is the sum of n terms for outer for loop. Inside, I will calculate those n terms individually. Right. Now, the ith term contains the product of i number of elements. So, can I say for k equals to 1, k is less than equal to i, k plus plus. Here I will multiply the respective terms in sum because this is for loop is of i size. So, i number of elements will be multiplied with my sum variable and then I will add it to my answer. Now, what are the elements? Here it is 1, then it is 2, 3, then it is 4, 5, 6, then it is 7, 8, 9, 10. So, it is going in consecutive order. So, I can take a variable j here which every time increases by 1. So, sum equals to sum into j and j plus plus. Okay. So, when i will be equal to 1, this loop will run 1 times and my sum will be 1 and j will become 2. Then, when my i will be 2, this loop will run 2 times and sum will contain 2 into 3 and j will become 4. Then when i will be equal to 3, this loop will run 3 times. It will calculate 4 into 5 into 6 and my j will become 7. Then when i will be equal to 4, this loop will run 4 times. So, it will be sum equals to 7 into 8 into 9 into 10 and my j will become 11. Okay. And individually, I will add these terms so that I get the required answer. So, I can say answer equals to answer plus sum. Right, and finally, I will return my answer. That's all. This is how we can solve this question. Right, so there are total n terms whose sum I want to do. So, I will calculate those n terms and every time I will add it to my answer variable. What are the i n terms? The i term is the product of i terms. So, I have a loop of i size 
and uh, value of each term is increasing by 1 every time. So, sum equals to sum into j and j plus plus. Okay. So, uh, this will calculate individual terms and they will add it to my answer. What will be the time complexity? There are two loops. It will be big O of n square. What would be the auxiliary space? It will be constant. We will not require any extra space. Now, let us look at its actual code implementation and then submit it. Okay, so if you look at the actual implementation, it is answer equals to 0. Also, I have taken one mod value because we have to take mod 10 key power 9 plus 7 as the answer can be very large. This outer for loop is to add up the n terms. Inner for loop is to calculate the ith term which is nothing but sum into sum equals to sum into j which we did here. Okay, and every time j plus plus and when the ith term is calculated, we add it to the answer. And every time we take modulo mod and finally return the answer. Let's submit it. Okay. So let me submit it. Okay. So we have solved this question successfully. I hope you have understood the solution completely. Thank you.